Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Mount Sinai virtual lecture series. My name is Leah Einwalter, and I'm the web and social media specialist for the city of Sunny Isles Beach. And this morning we are here with Dr. Oksana Karpov, internal medicine physician at Mount Sinai Medical Center in Sunny Isles Beach. She will be discussing health planning and staying healthy for the new year. If you have a question while listening to the lecture, type it in the comments section of the Facebook live stream and Dr. Karpov will answer them at the end of the lecture. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to Dr. Karpov. Thank you, Leah. Um, hello, everybody. Today we'll be talking about tips to stay healthy during the holidays and after the holidays. So from Thanksgiving to Christmas to Easter, there's a lot to love about the holiday season. Starting from shopping for gifts, preparing and eating large elaborate meals and desserts, Spending time and talking with friends and loved ones are just a few examples that make the holidays so great. Of course, the same things that make the holidays so enjoyable can get also get on the way of your health. So how do you stay healthy during and after the holidays? What do you do? First thing you need to do is to get rid of that guilty feeling. If you gain weight during the holidays, the damage is already done. So if you stepped on the scale and saw that you gained a couple pounds, five, 10 pounds, don't be too upset. What's the point of stressing over it? Just acknowledge and accept that you got off track, then let go of it and move on. Feeling of guilt will only delay your efforts to stay healthy and may actually lead to more problems. In fact, if you look at it from another perspective, the holiday season doesn't have to be a vacation from good health. Hopefully you can use this lecture today for next year's advice on how with a little effort and planning, you can avoid the health pitfalls. So now that the holidays are over, let's review some of the tips to stay healthy for the new year. First thing, very important. It's very important to stay hydrated. You have to drink enough water. It's important to stay hydrated even in the cooler winter months. While the common rule of thumb is eight ounce cups a day, many may need a little bit more than that, closer to maybe nine cups for women and 10 for men, according to the Institute of Medicine. The easiest way to stay hydrated for most is to carry a water bottle and have a cup of water before each meal. I would recommend that you choose water rather than sodas, juices, alcohols, any sugary drinks at your next holiday gathering. Or maybe, uh, you know, just choose water before you, do, you decide to drink juice or sodas. You need to drink enough water for so many reasons. Starting from simple reasons such that water helps prevent dry mouth. It keeps your throat and lips moist and prevents your mouth from feeling dry. Water promotes cardiovascular health as well. It keeps your body cool. Water helps muscles and joints work better. It keeps your skin looking better. So it helps cleanse your body. It's really important that you stay hydrated. One fact I wanted to mention is that lots of us drink coffee as well. And a lot of patients coming in think that coffee is a hydrating drink and it's actually not. So in fact, it has a little bit of a diuretic effect. So I would recommend that you still drink water through the day. Choose water and stay hydrated. That's my first tip. Second advice, this year, especially important that you stay up to date on your immunizations. I recommend that everybody gets their flu shot. The holiday season overlaps with flu season. Even with COVID, people still travel and spend time around other people during this time of the year. Flu vaccination is the most effective way to prevent flu outbreaks. Get your flu shot today. I know it's been a stressful year for everybody with COVID-19, but please don't ignore your regular checkups and physician visits. Get two annual flu shots. Make sure your immunizations are up to date. There are so many reasons to get an influenza vaccine each year. Before, because of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, Getting a flu vaccine during 2021 year will be more important than ever. Flu vaccines will not prevent COVID, but they will reduce the burden of flu illnesses, hospitalizations and death on the healthcare system and conserve medical resources for the care of people with COVID-19. So what are the, some of the benefits for flu vaccination? There are so many. So first thing is flu vaccination can keep you from getting sick with the flu. It prevents millions of illnesses and flu-related doctor's visits each year. For example, in 2019-20, flu vaccination prevented an estimated 7.5 million influenza illnesses, 
3.7 million influenza associated medical visits, 104,000 influenza associated hospitalizations, and it's over 6,000 influenza associated deaths. During season when the flu vaccine viruses are similar with circulating flu viruses, flu vaccine has been shown to reduce the risk of having to go to the doctors with the flu by about 40 to 60%. That's a big number. Flu vaccination is an important preventive tool for people with chronic health conditions as well. It has been associated with lower rates of some cardiac events among people with heart disease, especially among those who have had a cardiac event in the past year. It can also reduce worsening and hospitalization for flu-related chronic lung disease, such as persons with chronic obstructive lung disease or asthma. Flu vaccination has been shown in separate studies to be associated with reduced hospitalizations among people with diabetes and chronic lung disease. Many people at higher risk from the flu also seem to be at higher risk from COVID-19. So most common question right now coming from my patients, will I get sick if I get immunization, if I get a flu shot? Flu vaccine has been shown in several studies to reduce severity of illness in people who get vaccinated. You can still get sick from it, but it reduces the severity of illness. In 2017, there was a study that showed that flu vaccination reduced death, intensive care unit admissions, ICU length of stay, and overall duration of hospitalization among hospitalized flu patients. 2018 study showed that among adults hospitalized with the flu, vaccinated patients were 59% less likely to be admitted to the ICU intensive care unit than those who had not been vaccinated. Among adults in the intensive care unit with the flu, vaccinated patients on average spend four fewer days in the hospital than those who are not vaccinated. Another very important fact about flu shots, getting vaccinated yourself may also protect people around you including those who are more vulnerable to serious flu illnesses, like babies, young children, older people, and people with certain chronic health conditions. So get your flu shots. And most important question of the day is COVID vaccination. Do we have any information on it? Current data shows that both the Pfizer vaccine and Moderna vaccines are 95% effective in preventing the person from getting COVID-19. Typical side effects from vaccinations might include swelling or pain at the point of injection, tiredness, fever or headache, as well as muscular and joint pains. The incidence of fever has so far been found to be higher after the second dose of Pfizer vaccination. According to Center of Disease Control, they recommend giving COVID vaccine in three phases. Okay, phase one is healthcare personnel and long-term care facility residents. Phase two includes frontline essential workers and people 75 years of age and older. And the committee decided that frontline, frontline essential workers are uh, people, uh, for first responders, teachers, other education workers, including daycare workers, food and agriculture workers, postal workers, public transport, people who work in the manufacturing and grocery stores. So that's phase two. And phase three vaccination would include people aged 65 through 74 and people aged 16 through 64 with underlying medical conditions and other essential workers. At this point, Mount Sinai offers vaccinations to patients 75 years and older. And if you really want to get vaccinated, which we encourage everybody to do, you have to schedule an appointment. You can call our phone number, you can call our employee health number at 305-674-2312 if you're 75 years and above to schedule your appointment from 8 a.m. in the morning to 5. Appointment slots will be available Monday through Saturday from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. No walk-ins will be accepted. You must have an appointment. There's a lot of current questions coming from patients regarding COVID vaccination. First question I got, does the vaccine require two doses and how will the second dose of the vaccine be scheduled? Yes, vaccination is two doses. Both Pfizer and Moderna are two doses. Second dose is given 21 days after Pfizer and 28 days after Moderna. Your second dose appointment will be scheduled when you schedule your first appointment. In order for the vaccination to work and to be effective, it is critical that you receive both doses. What if somebody's pregnant, if, you become, if you're planning to become pregnant, 
What if uh, you're already pregnant? Can you get a vaccination? We do not recommend the vaccine during pregnancy or for nursing mothers. As the clinical trials for Pfizer and Moderna vaccines have no information on the effects during pregnancy or the presence of breast in the breast milk. If you would still like to be vaccinated, please discuss the risks and benefits of vaccination with your obstetrician and seek approval for your obstetrician for the vaccination. Next question. Can I take the vaccine if I have already had COVID-19 and I recovered? How long after that can I take it? There's not enough information currently available to say if or for how long after infection someone is protected from getting COVID-19 again. This is called natural immunity. Early evidence suggests that natural immunity from COVID-19 may not last very long, but many studies are needed to, be, to understand this better. At this time, Mount Sinai Medical Center is offering the vaccine to those who have recovered from COVID-19 with no waiting period. However, if you have any questions or concerns, please consult your physician. Another question I get, can I take the vaccine if I've had already had convalescent plasma or monoclonal antibody? The degree of immunity attained from receiving convalescent plasma or monoclonal antibodies is currently not known. More studies are needed to understand this. If you have received these treatments for COVID-19, you should wait at least 90 days before receiving the vaccination to avoid interference of the treatment. Another good question. <clears throat> Do I have to wear a mask, a face covering if I receive COVID-19 vaccination? Absolutely, yes. Okay, so those are the most common questions that I get from my patients at this point. <clears throat> Let's move on. Moving on to third recommendations on how to stay healthy uh, during the New Year's and after New Year's is to be able to manage your stress. Stress can take a toll on your health. Stress is a feeling. It's a feeling of emotional or physical tension. It can come from an, any event or thought that makes you feel frustrated, angry, or nervous. Stress is your body's reaction to a challenge or demand. In short bursts, stress can be positive, such as when it helps you avoid danger or meet a deadline. But when stress lasts for a very long time, it may actually harm your health. Stress also is a normal feeling. There are basically two, two types of stress, acute stress and chronic stress. What is acute stress? This is a short-term stress that goes away quickly. It helps manage your dangerous condition situation. It also occurs when you do something new or exciting. All people usually have acute stress at one time or another. What about chronic stress? This is stress that lasts for a longer period of time. Any type of stress that goes on for weeks or months is chronic stress. You can become so used to chronic stress that you don't even realize it is a problem. If you don't find ways to manage stress, it may lead to health problems. Your body reacts to stress by releasing hormones. These hormones make your brain more alert cause your muscles to tense and increase your pulse. In the short term, these reactions are good because they can help you handle the situation. This is your body's way, way of protecting yourself. But when you have chronic stress, your body stays alert even though there's no danger. So over time, this will put you at risk for health problems, many health problems. Some of them include high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, being overweight or obese, depression or anxiety, skin problems such as acne, eczema, many others. So if you have a health condition, chronic stress can make it worse. Stress can cause many types of physical and emotional symptoms. And sometimes you don't even realize that these symptoms are caused by stress. And here's some signs that stress may be already affecting your life and your body. If you have any of the current symptoms like diarrhea or constipation, forgetfulness, frequent aches and body pains, headaches, lack of energy, stiff neck, fatigue, trouble sleeping or sleeping too much, upset stomach, you're using too much alcohol, you're having weight loss or weight gain, those are some of the current signs that your body is under stress, chronic stress. What are some of the ways to reduce stress? Well, you have to learn how to manage it. You have to recognize your triggers. You have to be able to manage your time, prioritize your activities, 
It's one of the things that can help you deal with the stress. You have to be able to practice relaxation. Find something that you like exercise-wise that helps your body to relax. Whether it's yoga, going for a walk, any type of exercise will help your body relax and deal with stress. Set aside some time for yourself, some quiet time. You have to get make sure that you get enough sleep every night. And obviously my strongest recommendation is if you can, you have to avoid alcohol and drugs during stressful times. Basically stay healthy during and after the holidays and keep the holidays fun by managing your stress. So we already talked about staying hydrated, getting importance of getting your flu shot and COVID vaccinations, managing stress, what else can you do? Well, my next advice to you is washing your hands and definitely wearing your masks and face, face covering. Washing hands can help prevent sickness and prevent the spread of germs. Wash your hands thoroughly, wash your hands often. The best way to prevent the spread of infection and decrease the risk of getting sick is by washing your hands with plain soap and water every day. Make sure that you practice good hand hygiene. Masks. Masks are a simple barrier to help prevent your respiratory droplets from reaching others. Studies have shown that masks reduce the spray of droplets when worn over the nose and mouth. Masks can help prevent people who have COVID-19 from spreading the virus to others. The CDC recommends people wear masks, facial coverings in public settings, especially when other social distancing measures are difficult to maintain. Wearing a face mask may limit exposure to respiratory droplets and large particles and may help prevent people who have COVID-19 from spreading the virus. Wear your masks and wash your hands. Next thing you can do to stay healthy is to make sure you find that time to exercise. I have so many patients coming in for physical and routine exams. And when I ask them, how much exercise do you get? My, my main answers that I get is, I just don't have the time to exercise. I'm so busy during the day, I don't have time. So my, then I ask my patients, well, do you have time? Do you have that 20 minutes to half an hour to eat your meals, to watch TV, to talk to your friends on the phone? Uh, to browse the internet, of course you do. You do have at least of 20 minutes to half an hour of free time during the day. You have to be able to exercise. There's no excuse for you not to have a 20 minute to half an hour break for yourself. It's easy to neglect physical activity during the holiday season. It's colder outside, you have things to do, you're busy, you have your own schedules. Still, daily exercise is crucial for your health. You have to prioritize physical activity and make time to be active. We recommend that you get at least 150 minutes of moderate aerobic activity or 75 minutes of vigorous aerobic activity a week or a combination of moderate and vigorous activity. The guidelines suggest that you spread out this exercise during the course of the week. Greater amounts of exercise are good and will provide even greater health benefit. But remember, any exercise is always better than no exercise at all. How can I make exercise a part of my regular routine if I'm so busy? Well, make everyday activities more active. Even small changes can help. You can take the stairs instead of the elevator. You can walk down the hall during the break at work. You can park further away from your destination. There's so many things you do. There's so many things you can do to be more active. Try to be more active with your friends and family if you go outside. You can you know, walk together with a friend, obviously wear your mask, but you can also consider joining an online exercise classes. There's so many available at this point. Find something that you like, find the activity that you enjoy, and please make sure that you find at least 20 minutes to half an hour every day for yourself to exercise. Keep track of your progress. Keeping a log of your activity or using a fitness tracker may help you set up your goals and stay motivated. You can make exercise more fun. Try listening to music or watching TV while you exercise. You can mix, mix things up a little bit. If you stick with just one type of exercise, you might get bored. So try doing a combination of activities. However, my another advice to you is don't overdo it, don't overexercise. Many people's gut response would be to burn extra calories right away. I gained weight during the holidays, I'm 
I need to lose weight right now. I'm going to do a killer workout. I'm going to put myself on a strict diet. Do not do that. This isn't the best route. You know, this isn't the best choice. It can lead to burnout. It can lead to injury. And that false sense that you don't have to exercise anymore. If you exercise once, you, you did the vigorous activity for an hour and you think that you're done, that's it. I burned all my calories. That's not true. The most effective method is to jump right back into your normal exercise routine if you had it and focus on upping the intensity and time slightly. Another thing you can do is to create healthy holiday traditions. Consider taking up healthy holidays like going for a walk after Thanksgiving dinner instead of sitting at the table or continuing to eat. Plan an annual Black Friday hike, throw a football in the backyard, go for a bike ride or walk around the neighborhood. Remember again, any activity is better than no activity at all. And finally, my favorite advice to you would be make healthy food choices and control your portions. Cook a healthy holiday menu and fill your plate with healthy foods. Choose greens, green beans instead of green bean casserole and corn instead of candy corn. Choose healthy dishes such as salad or vegetable tray. If you're inclined to overeat around the holidays, determine how much food you're comfortable eating before you start eating and stop eating when you're full. Post holidays, the absolute worst thing you can do right now is to cut calories, skip meals, go on a very low calorie diet, go on a fast detox diet, or attempt to undo the damage right away. Please do not do that. Do not go to an extreme. Make it your daily routine, pre-plan your meals, go for an exercise, and stick to it. Eat mindfully. If you pre-plan your meals, make a list and make a list of grocery shopping items and then go for shopping and just follow your list. Make healthy food selections. Menus and recipes should focus on the whole unprocessed foods, emphasizing vegetables, including starchy ones, fruits, legumes, lean protein, healthy fat sources, such as olive oil, avocado, or nuts. If you're busy during the week, start pre-planning your snacks. You can pre-plan your um, meals over the weekend, okay? You should be aiming at about 1,200 and 1,500 calories per day. However, as I mentioned, do not calorie restrict yourself. If you're trying to lose weight and if you're trying to lose weight fast, then you can talk to your physician on the best way of attaining that. It might sound overwhelming, but at least try it. Start, start eating mindfully right away. We used to recommend calorie counting, like I just mentioned, you know, cut your calories, make sure you're counting your calories, strict calorie restriction. We do not recommend that anymore. Rather, we stress mindful eating. It works much better, at least to sustainability. Control your cravings. What really tempts you? What do you feel like you have no control over eating in a stressful or hungry moment? These are your trigger foods and they need to be removed from your environment. This can be hard if you've got kids in the house, but try using a healthy lifestyle. Encourage your kids to select healthier snack choices as well. Get rid of that candy in the house. You should be eating three regular meals a day and you can have snacks in between. Eating at regular intervals is the key to avoiding hunger and keeping blood sugar from getting too low. Don't skip snacks to avoid calories. Healthy snacking promotes weight loss by managing your hunger, stabilizing your blood sugar and preventing overeating and binges. Choose low calorie snacks like 100 and 200 prepackaged uh, snacks with fiber and protein. Additionally, avoid foods with added sugar such as sodas, candy, and even low calorie treats such as yogurt covered pretzels, almonds, and diet sodas with artificial flavors. Eating too many added sugars, as well as artificial sweeteners, can cause your blood sugar to drop really fast. So practice mindful eating, control your cravings, and pre-plan your meals. One more recommendation I have is avoid stepping on the scale, okay? After your holiday season, if you feel, again, going back to that guilt feeling, if you step on the scale, it will make things worse because you will most likely see the number go up. Don't be deterred by the number on a scale after a weekend or heavy meals. Due to bloating and water retention, poor and sleep, sleep, sleep up, the number on the scale is usually inaccurate and poor reflection of your body weight. In addition to this, avoid weighting yourself for a few days. 
it's due to emotional stress that the scale may num scale number may cause. Be motivated. Motivation is your key. Motivation is your friend. Okay, while your holiday slip up may not be something that you talk about, your success in getting back on track days is worth sharing with your friends, with your family. Tell your coworker, a friend, your hairdresser, friends and social media about how good you feel and how tracking your food intake has helped you lose weight and achieve your goals. Maybe you want to share a new recipe or workout you tried. The act of telling someone you're focusing on your health solidifies your commitment and will likely spur them to follow up on it and be successful later. My final recommendation for everybody to stay healthy, stay well, follow up with your primary care physicians, make sure you get your immunizations and happy new year. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Karpov. Um, we received a couple of questions from the audience for our Q&A section. And the first question is, what preventative treatments are there for good health? Preventative treatment, like I mentioned, make sure first thing is you follow up with your uh, primary care physician for your annual physical exam. Make sure you get routine blood work done. Make sure you get all of your immunizations up to date. Talk to your doctor about any medical issues, any problems, any health issues that you want to address on time, and then make sure that, you know, you follow up on that. And as I mentioned, healthy eating, good night's sleep, uh, stress management, or those are the things that you can uh, work on during the new year to stay healthy. Okay. Okay. And the second question we received was, for those who have auto-inflammatory disorders, do you still recommend the coronavirus vaccine? At this point, coronavirus vaccine is recommended for everyone. But again, I do recommend that you follow up and talk to your doctor and discuss this with your primary care provider to make sure that they look at your medical conditions and make sure that you know they talk about your specific medical conditions to make sure that you can receive the vaccination. But at this point, we do recommend it for everyone. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Karpov. That is all the questions from the audience that we have for today. And I also wanted to mention that the city of Sunny Isles Beach is sharing the latest vaccination updates from Miami-Dade County on our website at sibfl.net slash vaccines. So on behalf of the city of Sunny Isles Beach and Mount Sinai Medical Center, we would like to thank you for joining us today and be sure to mark your calendars for our next virtual lecture on Thursday, February 4th. Thank you and stay safe. Yeah. Thank you.